Today we're testing out three different iron lofts and we're gonna show you the advantages and disadvantages of going power spec or retro spec with your irons. Hey golfers, Drew Mahold here with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter here at Second Swing. Outside today at Les Bolstad Golf Course, uh, we're doing an outdoor test today. Uh, we've got three G425 iron heads from Ping. Um, we're gonna be testing different iron lofts, specifically looking at power spec and retro spec and maybe comparing them to the standard loft. So Thomas, I know this is a very popular uh, method of club fitters to get golfers into the right specs for their swing going power spec or retro spec and so can you maybe just give us a brief overview of what each of those mean? I mean yeah first start off this is not just unique to ping. I know ping they offer their power spec and their retro spec loft options mm -hmm. but when I'm doing a custom fitting I do it a lot of times so it might be a Mizuno iron, a Titleist iron, mm -hmm. a TaylorMade iron. I might ask specifically for the loft to be two degrees weaker or stronger based on what I'm seeing a golfer do when they're delivering that club. So I, I'm focusing on their dynamic lo loft essentially and seeing mm -hmm. how they deliver that club and I'm also focusing on how much spin that they generate. The other unique thing with retro specking lofts versus power specking lofts and the standard loft is there are some golfers out there that do have some speed but they clearly fit into a more game improvement iron. My concern with those golfers is when they connect they're going to have a ball that's going to go 20, 30 yards further than mm -hmm. their kind of normal shot and obviously when they miss it, it's going to go a little bit shorter. So their wide range from north to south on the dispersion screen is going to be very large. Spin is a good way to be able to control how far that golf ball goes. And if you're spinning the ball more by putting the lofts maybe in a more retro spec loft, it's not going to be as wide apart. Essentially, mm -hmm. you're going to get more consistency. You may get a little more height. Loft is our friend with our irons. So it's not always about just jacking up those loft on those irons. It's specifically to how the golfer delivers the golf club. Sure. So today we've got, like I said, we got three G425 iron heads. We've also got a couple different fitting components here, Thomas. So um, how are we able to do this and what's the format of the test going to be today? Yeah, so uh, fitting components from Ping, we normally get a power spec loft that has 28 and a half degrees of loft on it. We also get the standard head, the Ping G425 standard head's got 30 degrees of loft on it. If you look on their website, you'll notice it says 32.3 degrees is the retro spec loft for the Ping G425 iron. We don't happen to get that. I actually had to go and bend this fitting component a little bit to myself, so I got it to 32.3 degrees so we could do this test today. But notice how there's a wide range here from mm -hmm. about 28.5 to 32.3. This is the exact same iron head. And we're going to showcase the differences on how loft influences how far the golf ball goes and maybe how straight the golf ball goes. Perfect, perfect. Well, I know you're going to hit some shots today, Thomas. Uh, you ready to do that? Let's do it. Okay, Drew, I'm going to start off swinging kind of more of a medium speed. Earlier on, we'll hit, three, we'll hit some shots with those three different heads, and then we'll go to my normal speed and we'll show the differences with a slower speed and a little more faster speed. Okay, perfect. So first off, I've got the standard head, so 30 degrees of loft is on, on this 7 iron. Okay. All right, so Thomas, we'll go from standard spec to power spec here for five shots. Perfect. Okay. So what have I always said in the past? Every degree of loft is usually around about three yards, essentially. Yeah. So one and a half degrees loft, if I was going to swing the same 81 mile an hour club speed, we may expect this to go possibly up to five yards further. Okay. Yep. That was a little less spin on that shot. Mm -hmm. Which will happen. Okay, so we had five shots with uh, the power spec lofting now. Yep. So I'm, I'm seeing here average spin, looks like a couple hundred RPMs less. Yeah, we got, yeah, just a little over kind of 100 RPM lower spin, and you also gain some distance, um, yep. both carry and total, which is to be expected there with um, less loft on it. So now with retro, you would assume kind of going the other way then compared to standard. So, you know, a little bit more spin, 
um, maybe a little bit less distance. Perfect, let's hit the retro spec now. Yeah, at address, wow, what a difference that four degrees of loft makes. Yeah. This, yeah. I guess going from power to retro. <laughs> from power to retro. Yeah, this is, looks a little bit more like a seven iron loft. Oh, that is way higher. That's such a different bull fly. That is like. way higher. Yeah, that is sky high. Yeah, that's very it's, it's amazing that's that this the trajectory I'm seeing kind of where the height the bull yeah. was going there. It's like you went from six iron to pitching wedge. <laughs> All right. So we've got five now with each of the three different lofts. Yep. I'm gonna bring up numbers and dispersion really quick, but uh, just looking at dispersion quick, you can see the pattern, right? Of kind of power is gonna be the farthest down, then you got standard kind of in the middle, and then the retro spec is the shortest. Um, and then looking at numbers there, so we talked about how power spec you gained probably something along the lines of six to seven yards. I think you were mentioned five. It's very close to like that. Yep. Um, retro spec, you actually lost about 10 yards of carry distance there. So, and I think right away we noticed just the difference in trajectory right off the bat. Yeah, I think, yeah, the, the retro, it looked, honestly, it looked kind of strange, like knowing this is a more game fruit and iron expectancy, a little less loft. And like I said, it looks, this is like, oh, this looks like it's got a loft, a mm -hmm. loft on it address. Right. And then the first shot I hit, I was like, wow, that thing is just like <laughs> flew so much higher in the air mm -hmm. with it there too. I think the spin rate, you'll kind of notice the spin rate is going to be higher with the retro. It's just the loft purely doing that. Yeah. I'd also suspect probably a little bit less bull speed and less carry distance. Right. Yeah, or well, maybe carry distance not so much to be so far apart, but more that total distance because it's going on a different flight. Right, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and, you know, I think we should also note that the, the actually your, your dispersion with the carry distance on the power spec was pretty consistent, but the smallest circle there might be the retro circle. It's pretty close in terms of, at least from kind of east to west, right, your left to right dispersion. Yep. And, you know, generally, right, more loft on the club, kind of easier to hit it straight. Um, we've talked about that several times on videos. So yep. that's another reason that a lot of golfers may be, you know, with that high speed, we'll get to that kind of with, when you hit your full swing shots, but um, you know, golfers that have a lot of speed, but maybe need the game improvement iron. This is an, that's an example of why lofting those irons up a little bit, you get more accuracy out of that just by the nature of a higher lofted club. Yep. So what were my three carry distances for those uh, different settings. So we've got the power spec carry distance was it was 178.3. Then you went to standard or at standard it was 171.8. Retro was 160.5. Okay. Yep. So you got so. a good range there. Um, and then we can talk about so spin with the retro was actually over 6,000. And um, and so club speed again. Your club speed was pretty close on all of them. You were within about a mile an hour. So uh, then the difference was you know the ball speed was very different off of each just because of the loft, yep. resulting in different spins, resulting in different um, distances. And also we just talk about height. So height retrospec was obviously the highest one, um, 86 feet in the air. So, um, and then the other ones were just under 80. So, so um, naturally that landing angle, what I'd like to always bring up in kind of fittings is probably gonna be a little steeper with the retro yep. spec loft because it's gonna come into the green and kind of land a little bit softer on the green for us. Yep. Where the power spec is gonna probably come a little bit flatter and kind of roll out a little bit more. Yep, yep. yeah, that's exactly what happened. You know, yep. landing angle was the shallowest with the power spec at 40.9. So retro spec was 45.3. So yep. um, that's yep. the advantage right there. Well, someone, I always say that, that 45 degree number is a, is a good number with, yep. a, with a seven iron. So if I was going to swing at 80 miles an hour with a seven iron, I'd probably want to go with the retro spec so I get that landing angle closer to 45 versus 40 right. degrees with the power spec. Well, now we can go to your kind of your normal speed. Uh, and I think we have gotten a lot of comments on this on the channel where people are in that higher speed category, but they don't make the consistent contact needed for a player's iron and they want to get a game improvement iron, but they're worried, like you mentioned before, of the distance disparity that could be created there. So um, now we can get to kind of your normal speed of seven iron, which is going to be in the upper 80s miles an hour, and we'll see how things shake out. Sounds good. Higher ball flight. Yes, it is. It's amazing what the speed does.
That was a good swing. That was a better swing. Yeah. So that'll be interesting, that last shot, because that was a little bit of a pull. I'm curious to see what happens here, because I know a lot of golfers, they worry about when they pull it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the ball may spin a lot less, 1,000 RPMs less, and go 15 yards over the green. Kind of notice it went just a little bit further, but that spin rate on that one was 6,500 RPMs of spin. Still yeah. very good. Right, yeah. So, Thomas, you mentioned the, the spin rate, and I got the numbers up here with kind of just the ones that you hit at your speed. Um, your normal seven iron speed. And so you can clearly see the difference with the retro, right? The big difference, about six to 700 RPM increase in, in spin from retro to kind of both standard and power specs, actually. So, yep. um, and we noticed that right away just looking at the shots. I mean, there was a clear difference in the way the ball was flying. So um, other numbers, I mean, the carry distance dropped, you know, roughly nine to 10 yards, um, even from standard specs. So, but the interesting thing is that the numbers for standard and power were actually pretty similar. Yeah, I kind of noticed the spin rate looked kind of similar. I'm curious, what was my efficiency rating with uh, with both those two? They were both the same at 147. Yeah, so, so that tells me when I was hitting the power spec, I wasn't hitting as well. Mm -hmm. So there's something around me about me having 28 and a half degrees on that seven iron that I just couldn't quite hit it yeah. as well. You'd expect a little more ball speed. I think we got a little bit more ball speed, but you would kind of notice that the efficiency really, 147 with both, you'd yeah. expect less loft would cause the efficiency to go up. Right, yeah. yeah, interesting. And so we can, you know, I can quickly bring up the, uh, the dispersion map. We can kind of see how those are different, right? So blue is the power, um, and then the standard spec is kind of your gray there. And so you can see how they're pretty similar, right? I think the good shots with both were pretty similar. And then um, you had maybe a couple with the, the standard that were a little bit out to the right. But otherwise, um, you can, really the big difference was retro. So if a golfer is in that high speed category like we talked about, doesn't want to you know, have the extreme distance of a game improvement iron maybe. that you know, Some players, if they connect with that speed, could hit the 7 iron 200 yards. And they don't really want that. And you can see on the map here how you can have a more controlled distance with a retro spec in a game improvement iron. Yeah, I think coming back to that last shot that I hit with the retro spec, when I feel like I pulled it a little bit, it didn't go flying long no. left. It was it was a little bit further, but it wasn't like always an out of control. Right. And that's also important to come back to. I mean, we're we're testing seven irons today. We didn't talk about the uh, the power specking and the retro specking and the standard loft with a pitching wedge with these irons. Yeah. So I believe that it's about forty two and a half degrees aloft on the pitching wedge with the power spec pitching wedge. That's a very strong pitching wedge. Yeah. So then when it comes to gapping with your wedges, it's really hard to try and find the right. kind of gapping. At the other end of the spectrum, the retro spec pitching wedge is 47 degrees. So that's more in that kind of traditional 46 to 47 degrees where a pitching yeah. wedge. It's going to cause the ball to spin a little bit more and not go quite as far. And it's going to be easier to gap because a lot of right. people that will be playing a gap wedge of 50 or 52 degrees aloft on their, on their wedge much easier to gap mm -hmm. than as opposed to having a pitching wedge that's got 42 and a half degrees loft on it. Yeah, so I mean basically what we're seeing, you know, you'll go across the board with your kind of iron spec charts and you'll see that the power and retro spec are usually two to three degrees kind of, you know, higher or lower than the standard loft. And so yep. um, in that you'll see kind of a little bit, I mean, we kind of saw some of those trends today, but uh, in general you'll see, you know, with the power spec, more distance, a little bit lower flight, lower spin, right? And then vice versa with um, your retro spec. Yeah, I think it really comes down to the player's swing tendency, how they deliver the golf club, how much spin that they're generating on the golf club, and what their goals are with, with the iron fitting. Mm -hmm. If their goal is they just want to hit the ball far, obviously you can definitely do a power spec yeah. and they want to keep up their bodies there's, and total There will distance. be things that you'll sacrifice yeah. there. Yeah, sacrifice, what you'll sacrifice is going to be the height and that the stopping power. Mm -hmm. At the other end of the spectrum, if a player has a lot of speed or they need more spin, a little more height, now I would be hesitant to put them in that power spec because, or even the standard loft, because yeah. it's not going to be high enough. Right. It's not going to give them, give them that landing, landing angle of power. And you can get to see with my speed when I was swinging at fast speed, it was flying a lot higher. Yeah, you definitely generate a lot more height. 
obviously the highest was retrospect and that was also the steepest landing angle which we would expect so yeah. um, but interesting to take a look at these numbers now and kind of give people uh, you know a look at actual differences between you know power spec standard spec and retro spec and that a I mean it's you can do that with any iron set that you you know get custom fit for at second swing uh, but then knowing that there's that benefit there for a lot of those players that might swing fast uh, but don't want that m massive distance um, dispersion there and they can go with the retro spec have a little bit more control so um, this is a really good one though Tom it's uh, something that a lot of golfers maybe to take note of and you know in future iron fittings can bring up to their fitter yeah the loft on your irons is very important uh, make sure that you cover the spin cover what you're trying to achieve with, with, your, with your goals and work with your fitter and make sure you get that dialed in because loft on every single manufacturer seven iron is going to be different, especially those more game improvement irons. There's some game improvement irons out there of 26, 27 degrees of loft on them. Sure. That's without even decreasing or ordering right. the loft even stronger. So uh, there's definitely a difference and that's why some irons will go further, but you wanna make sure that you've got that landing angle. You wanna make sure dispersion pat pattern is tight that's what I'm more focused on in an iron fitting. Sure. So golfers interested in a uh, standard spec or a power spec or retro spec or any spec uh, that they think they need for their uh, set of irons, you can come into Second Swing, speak to an expert like Thomas here at one of our stores, or you can also contact our online fitting and support team and schedule a fitting through a phone call or a video chat. Regardless, at any fitting at Second Swing, you're going to get fit like a pro for your new set of irons. So Thomas, thank you for providing your insight today and hitting the shots. Not a problem.